Hello. Uh, today we're just going to discuss the handout on graphing data. Um, now, I I would imagine in this course, uh, at least I would hope that most of us know how to read graphs, and um, hopefully um, there isn't too much of a need to go over this in enormous detail. But since this um, topic is so central to data management. I feel compelled to go over it. So uh, we have a bar graph here. And notice the bar graph uh, has certain things here. Uh, th it has a title, energy consumption. It has a y-axis that says activity. And it has an x-axis uh, giving the energy in kilojoules per minute. Now, um, the activity is house cleaning, cycling, swimming, and brisk walking. Now. It would appear as though the kind of data here isn't numerical at all. It's it's like we have words or names given to them. And so um, we call this nominal data, okay? And, uh, you know, it's like your hair color or, <laughs> you know, things like that. Uh, it's, not, it's not like height or weight or blood pressure. You know, you would have that, you know, if, if that appeared on this axis, it wouldn't be nominal data, it would definitely be numerical data, but in this case we actually have things that we're measuring and different types of things. So what kind of inferences and what kind of interpretations can we make on a graph like this? Well, let's take a look at some of the questions. Which activity uses energy about two and a half times as fast as house cleaning? Well, we look at house cleaning, it looks like it's about roughly 15, maybe a little more than 15 uh, kilojoules per minute in energy. So we want something that is um, maybe more than 30, right? So twice 15 is 30, but we want something that's more than 30. It looks like swimming uses energy about that much. And in fact, there isn't any other that even comes close to two and a half but they did say about two and a half, so we're not going for precise numbers here. And notice that we're not going for precise measurements here. All of these uh, heights of these bars can be estimated. And of course, you would normally use estimation for a bar graph. If you walked for about 20 minutes, how much energy would you use? Well, let's look at brisk walking. We got about I don't know, 22 kilojoules per minute? Does that look right? So if we went for 20 minutes, this is kilojoules per minute, we're going to have 22 multiplied by 20. I would say that's roughly 440 if I'm a betting man, but uh, you got your calculator in front of you and you figure it out. Part C, which two activities combined would match the energy used by swimming? two activities, if we added two activities together, which would, which ones would um, match the energy used by swimming? Well, I imagine house cleaning at 15 and brisk walking at about 22 would make about 37, which would be about right where swimming is, just about. Um, and the recommended amount of energy you should use per week is about 7,000 kilojoules. So if you cycle four days a week, um, how long do you need to cycle each day to meet this target? Well, if you look at swimming, I would, I would look at that for, um, you look at that as about 30, let's say 38 kilojoules per minute. And, um, you'd probably maybe take this, that 38, divide it into 7,000, and come up with the number of minutes. Um, and then do what? What do you think you ought to do? We want to cycle four days a week, but if we divide 38 into 7,000, we'll get the total number of minutes for the entire week. So what? what's missing? Well, what's missing is we should divide by four to get the answer. All right, um, let's see. 
The table shows the estimated populations of several of the largest species in the world. Display da the data in a bar graph. Well, once again, I would, I guess the neatest way for me to display such data in a bar graph is to simply just place the names, the nominal data along the y-axis simply because, at least for me, I can I can write these things horizontally and that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to write them horizontally. I think the first one said mammals, if I'm not mistaken. Let's, um, so the species was mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians, and fish. So mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians, and fish. And we basically have a y-axis and an x-axis. And along here, we just have, I guess, what we can call species, if I'm not mistaken, if that's what it says. Yeah. So here are our species. And along the x-axis, I'm not drawing this very well. Let's just uh, move that y-axis so that it coincides with a... a grid line and um, let's take a look at these numbers 4600, 9500, 10,000 and 2400 well what you would do is you would try to take you know the estimated population and see, you know, what you would do in terms of um, getting the numbers to work out along the y-axis. Uh, because what are your, you know, one of the things you would ask yourself is, what's the lowest number and what's the highest number? Well, they seem to go in numerical order. So we're going from 4,600 to 24,000. So they've got to, they've got to all fit on the same axis. Okay. So it would it would appear to me that maybe I can just graph this in the thousands. Now I don't have you know 24 lines here. In fact, I'd be lucky if I have even half that. So maybe I should do two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. 20, 22, 24, 26, and 28. It's okay to go a little above. That's there's nothing, no harm in that. Now, um, if we're going to now make a bar graph, um, it's it's good to have a ruler on you um, to help you with the lines. Uh, for one thing, the mammals are 4,600. Well. What's 4,600 on your bar graph? 4,600 seems to go right up to about there. 4,600, well, that's more like 5,000. So 4,600 might be about there. So, and it's kind of hard to do a good graph on, on an electronic software, but there you go. Here's sort of a bar graph. And that is a, for my purposes, a close enough representation of 4,600. Although it, I could have extended it slightly more, but the next number is 9,500. Well, what would 9,500 look like on my graph? Remember, that's nine nine thousand is about there, so 9,500 has to be halfway between there and this this grid line. So if we pay respect to that, it should be right about there. And I will now draw the straightest line I can using a ruler. And I really am using a ruler, by the way. And 
I also just draw another bar. And so that's 90, that's my 9,500. The next one is 10,000. So 10,000 isn't going to be very different from 9,500. It's just going to be a little more, and it's going to go right up to the grid line for birds and amphibians. So that one's going to be kind of easy to draw. It's just going to go right there. I'm going to top it off there and color it in. And there you go. So there's my bar for reptiles and amphibians. And finally, fish. 24,000. Well, 24,000 for fish goes all the way up to here. Lots and lots of fish. And once again, I draw a straight line. And color it in. You can use different colors of bars if you like. I'm just sticking to one color and I'm not going for artistic merit here. I am simply going for just expedience and practicality. But at the same time I'm aiming for reasonable accuracy so that a, a reasonable person looking at my bar graph will be able to get an accurate idea of the numbers that came from uh, uh, numbers in the table that they came from. Um, I could have I could have been a little cleaner about titling my my axes, uh, you know, and it's only because it's a little awkward working with a laptop here, and you know, getting things like um, titles here to come out, but maybe maybe that might be better, and then estimated population. Uh, goes along here and of course you would simply say which way it's going because notice that um, the the um, the data here is called nominal data because they're the names of things they're mammals birds reptiles and amphibians and fish along the x-axis we have the estimated population in thousands now, what I could have done is I could have actually put mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians, and fish along the x-axis. I could have done it like that, too. Uh, so there are really two ways of representing this data. And, um, you know, maybe another thing I could have done, now that I think about it, is also um, rewrite this x-axis so that it is actually a straight line and not just something I guesstimated. And not only that, now that I did it this way, I'm going to have to now put it along. Yeah, that's one thing I can do with software, is just move lines to wherever I want to move them, and so on. Okay, so there you go. So now you have, you have uh, a bar graph of uh, species versus estimated population.